Hi, my name is Chung Wong, and I'm going to present my final project for class CS224N. It's titled Question and Answering System for the Squad Dataset, and it's based on the default final project. I'll quickly go through the task definition, as it's already quite well known. The assignment is to build a machine comprehension system, which is able to answer questions on the squad dataset. There's a large body of text and work devoted to this interesting task. Many of the most successful models have a structure which consists of an embedding layer, a tension flow layer, modeling layer, and an output layer. We take inspiration from this research and improve on the baseline model which was provided on this assignment via using more sophisticated network components as well as carefully tuning the hyperparameters. In the remaining slides, I'll go through an overview of the methodology used as well as some of the interesting results from the experiment. The first step was to examine the features of the dataset. This is informative for tuning the hyperparameters as well as some of the architecture choices. For example, it was through looking at the dataset that I decided that a specific set of the word embeddings should be trainable. This is because I noted that a lot of the common words in the question set are different to the most common words in the context paragraph. And given that the glove embeddings are trained on similar data to the context paragraphs, i.e. if we could be the data, it's likely that training the most common words in the question set would be beneficial. In the end, I chose nine such words, such as what, did, many, who, etc. At the same time, I was careful not to choose too many uh, word embeddings to, to be trainable, as that might cause overfitting. The next step is to experiment with the attention flow layer. Attention is important as it allows information from the question and other parts of the context paragraph to be encapsulated within the context word uh, representations. I actually implemented three types of um, attention layers, by def, co-attention, and self-attention. Uh, given that by def and co-attention are similar types of attention, I tested one against each other and found that by def performs better than co-attention. I then combined the self-attention layer to the uh, outputs of the by def um, layer so that the enriched co co context representations could attend to all other context locations. This added about 1% to the F1 score. A quick implementation looked. Uh, self-attention is um, was originally described as uh, using additive attention. However, however, I found that to be uh, very memory intensive. So to avoid uh, out of memory errors, I used a type of multi a multiplicative attention. I found two interesting results when looking at the modeling layer and the prediction algorithm at test time. For the modeling layer, I implemented the um, structure described in the BIDEF paper, which consists of two layers of bidirectional GRUs, and it gave a huge improvement over the baseline of about 20% in the F1 score. For the prediction at test time, we followed the DRQA paper. This basically maximizes the product of the start probability and the end probability based on some con constraints around the location of the start and end words. One of the constraints is the length of the answers span which is predicted. And by carefully um, uh, uh, choosing this uh, parameter, I was able to add two percentage points to the F1 score. This chart shows a um, diagram representation of the uh, complete architecture, starting from the context and uh, question text at the beginning, then going through the uh, word embeddings, which um, are passed through a linked uh, uh, by GRU. Then we have the, the by attention layer, uh, which feeds through a self attention layer and then is uh, concatenated or is summed with the uh, with the output. And then finally, um, the the modeling layer is uh, again uh, two by GRUs. The model achieved seventy five point one one percent on F1 score and 64.75% on EM score on the development set. This is fairly competitive, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. It is also interesting to see how the model does on different types of questions. Particularly, it does worse on Y types of questions. I guess it's likely that these types of questions require the most amount of comprehension of the text 
and therefore is the most strenuous from the model. There are lots of avenues for future work. For example, implementing a character level CNN as that has been shown to improve performance on out of vocabulary words. Use of ensemble models and new types of architecture such as attention is what you need. I look forward to using more of them in the future.